Reproduction is practiced by all animals on Earth, by the small, large and very large alike. Sex in the animal kingdom takes a multitude of forms, and creatures go to extraordinary lengths to pass on their genetic material to the next generation. But why are there so many ways of doing it? The earliest single-celled organisms didn't reproduce sexually, but instead made exact replicas of themselves as they split in two, a process known as binary fission. This mode of reproduction is very efficient. From a single parent cell, you can instantly get two identical daughter cells, but reproducing this way has its drawbacks. With no genetic differences between parent and offspring, they have the same characteristics, so any weaknesses the original organism had would be passed on to the next generation, which is not ideal for a species hoping to thrive in a changeable environment. The solution? Mix up the genetic traits. Around a billion years ago, single-celled organisms like this paramecium found a way to exchange genetic material. Two individuals would come together, fuse their membranes and swap characteristics. When they parted, they would be made anew, completely different individuals, after the equivalent of a mere handshake. This simple act marked the beginning of the sexual revolution. From this point on, the new combinations of characteristics allowed evolution to advance in leaps and bounds, leading to the distinction of gender, resilience against environmental change, and rapid species diversification. But if you're passing on your genetic legacy, how can you make sure you pick the choiciest morsels from the smorgasbord of genetic traits? Without a dating app on the savannah, how do creatures know they'll be getting the best partner? One obvious characteristic that's useful to have in your offspring is health and strength. And one way to demonstrate these characteristics is by exerting sexual dominance. Take this male Nubian ibex. He guards over a watering hole and all the females who visit it. But such a prize of a harem is worth fighting for, and he must defend his patch against competitors. With skulls that are specially reinforced to take a battering, a fight between an evenly matched pair can go on for an hour. The victor will not only have proved his strength and his superior genes, but will have also gained access to an exclusive club of willing sexual partners. Score. But not everyone likes a show of brute strength, and some animals take a more graceful approach to demonstrating their genetic viability. They bust a move. That's right, dancing. Every aspect of these male birds of paradise's looks and behavior has evolved for a single purpose, to mate. While the genetic advantages afforded by elaborate plumage and complex dances are not immediately obvious, these courting displays are actually signaling health and intelligence to the females, something that will doubtless give their offspring a better start in life. Okay, so you've showed your smooth moves or signs of strength and found yourself a mate. Time for wedding bells to chime and a lifelong partnership to begin. This is certainly the case for certain species, like the African penguin. Once they've found a mate, they stick with them for their whole lives. And such a strategy is useful when their offspring benefit from both parents sticking around. Even within a large penguin colony, the cooperative partnership between two parents keeps the babies fed and protected for the five months it takes for them to mature. But sexual monogamy is a tough trade-off. Yes, you give your offspring the best start in life, but this approach can go against the hard-grained instinct of animals to spread their seed. And some animals have found a sneaky way to get the best of both worlds. Take the male pied flycatcher. His song attracts a female to his chosen nest site, and after they mate, she lays eggs that he sired. But before long, he's out again, singing for more sex. He lures a mistress to a second nest box and sires another clutch of eggs. 
and then he returns to his wife. He plays the model father to his first family, feeding and protecting his healthy chicks. Meanwhile, his mistress is left to raise her brood as a single mother, and with only one parent to feed them, not all of the chicks survive. But those who do carry the father's genes. Through his trickery and neglect, the male has boosted his brood and further secured his genes' place in the next generation. This is such a surefire strategy that around 90% of birds are like this socially monogamous but not sexually faithful. It's not always the males who take a crafty approach to sex though. When the existing male guardians of a pack of lions are deposed after a bloody battle, the new dominant males are quick to kill the cubs of the old family. But the bereft mothers have a plan to secure the futures of their next offspring. By being sexually insatiable, they demand sex as often as every 20 minutes. When one of the males has had enough, another member of the pack takes over. Over three days, the females will have sex over 300 times with both partners, and by the time the cubs are born, the mothers have cleverly confused the issue of paternity. Not knowing which cub belongs to them, it's in both of the male's interests to protect the whole family. And so the cubs are protected and the female's genes are passed on, all thanks to a little manipulation and promiscuity. In fact, promiscuity in the animal kingdom is overwhelmingly popular, with less than 5% of the 5,000 known mammal species sticking with a single partner. Another surefire way of avoiding clashes between rivals is to keep them guessing. The female blue-headed wrasse is trailed by an entourage of males, and as they race after her to the surface, spawning takes place in an explosive orgy of eggs and sperm. This broadcast spawning allows for the greatest amount of genetic variation among all strategies, since a single release of eggs could be fertilised by dozens of fathers. So there you have it. Whether it's fighting or dancing, committing or playing the field, there seem to be as many approaches to sex as there are different animals in the wild, all with the desperate goal of furthering their line and injecting some genetic variation. And when you think about it, some of the strategies aren't so different from our own antics. It's almost as if we're animals too. Here at Earth Unplugged, we answer fascinating questions about the natural world. Click here to watch more from me and let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe to Earth Unplugged.